uh, a bit of a like background. How did I manage to give this talk? Actually, Ramu approached me. Uh, so he said, "Why not just give a talk about my flying experience?" Ah. So my first question is, what has piloting got to do with space, right? I know this is a beat up on space stuff. Ah. Okay, so uh, he told me that actually many astronauts have pilot licenses. Okay, so I read out and yeah, it's really true. Ah. You can see this article, right? Okay, let like me just show you here. Lah. So again, this is by Ask the Astronaut. So the key thing is that NASA believes, you see, that flying experience builds decision making and judgment skills that greatly improves your odds of being a successful and surviving in space. And the key part here is like, if you choose to pursue a private pilot's license on your own, you'll find flying to be challenging, rewarding, and fun, and you'll be ahead of the curve in preparing to work in space. So I think this is the closest association I can find out that links to your meetup team. Lah. Okay. So maybe uh, I'm that I'm that much closer to be an astronaut. <laughs> okay. So uh, as every, everything, right, uh, it starts with a dream. Lah, okay, so I've always thought about uh, l learning to fly, be the person controlling the plane instead of being just the passenger. Okay, so, uh, but I didn't do that when I was younger. I didn't think much about youth flying club then. And by the time I realized it was too late, I'm past the age of applying to youth flying club. Okay, so up to two years ago, yeah, this was exactly two years, almost exactly two years ago, I... A friend of mine called Roger, this guy here, and uh, Joyce, right? So yeah, both, uh, Joyce is my friend, and Roger, he recommended like, him because he has a plane. This is his plane, you know. He owns that plane. So he said, okay, let's go for a joyride in uh, Sunai. And Sunai is an airport in Johor. Okay? So I went with them, and I, this is some pictures over there. Okay? So uh, that got me thinking like that. I said, someday, I will learn how to fly one of these. And know the day, uh, September 13, 2017. Uh. So obviously, I achieved my goal already. Uh. But that was then. Okay. So I looked up my options. The first thing is, obviously, can I learn to fly in Singapore? Uh? Right. That's a logical choice. So uh, this, I look up this. Okay, the thing about flying is that if you take a license in that country, right, you can only fly a plane that's registered in that country. This is not like a car. You take a license, you can drive any car. It's not like an international driving permit. But plane, you cannot. Uh. Plane, you take a license in Singapore, you can only fly a Singapore registered plane. Take a license in Malaysia, you can fly a Malaysian re registered plane only, and same for US. Okay, so travel wise, right? Negligible. Uh. Sarita Airport is nearby. Okay, so the thing in Singapore is that you need to do part time. And if you do part time, you take one to two years. Assuming you do once every week. Uh. And to maintain the license, right? you need to fly at least five hours every year. Two of them must be the instructor. I think the SYFC guy, right? Calgary is correct, right? Five hours every year. Okay? But the worst thing, right, is that the Singapore license is a restricted license. So what this means is that you cannot fly the plane out of Singapore. Can you imagine Singapore airspace is so small? You take a flying license and you cannot fly out of Singapore. Okay, the reason is that Singapore airspace is too small, you cannot have the full uh, private pilot training. So in order to Re, uh, to remove that restriction, you need to take up training in another country to continue. Then after that, he tells CES, I've did my cross country flight. Okay, then CES will uh, remove that restriction. So usually most people go to Malaysia to do it. Now that begs the question, right? Why not just go to Malaysia in the first place, right? Okay, so the thing is the nearest airport, Sanai Airport, right, is 1.5 hours away. Assuming not just a, a, a route there, you know, you need to clear custom everything at one and a half hours for Singapore to go there. Then again, the same thing, part-time, okay, one to two years. Imagine every week you go there. It's quite tiring. Uh. The thing to maintain a Malaysian license, you need to take an annual flight test with the examiner. Every year, you need to find some examiner there to say that, okay, you are still good. He will test you. Uh, then uh, another this killer factor, you need to be a minimum of 30 years old for a foreign student pilot. So even uh, as of today, I still haven't hit this limit yet. I'm close to there, but I'm not there yet. So I still cannot take the Malaysia option. And even if you're above 30 years old, right, you still need the something called training visa, which is hard to get also. So the leave the last option, ah, which is go to the US. Okay, so travel to the US, yes, it's far, but it's one-off travel. You can take full-time, a few months. Uh, now the cool thing about maintaining a US license is that uh, you just need to do a binary review. That means every two years, right, you take a test with the instructor. If the instructor deems you okay, he will sign your logbook, you can continue to fly. 
and the number of planes of US registered planes is a lot in terms of general aviation even more than in Singapore you go to Sarita Airport right the only two Singapore registered general aviation planes are these two no other planes you take a Singapore license you can only fly these two planes very pathetic eh? at least out of Singapore lah, these, these two planes so there are a lot of US registered planes at Sarita Airport so it's obvious how you take a US license like it's generally more powerful lah. okay okay so this is more of a like the people ask me like okay what does private pilot license mean in the grand scheme of things right so it is the first stage so usually a single engine as a private pilot I cannot earn money and most hobbies really stop here okay after a private pilot is called instrument rating means you can fly in very low visibility or no visibility so some hobbies take this up also as a safety beyond that it's called a commercial license uh, you finally can earn money know that everyone you take test one okay finally uh, not finally uh, after the commercial license you can take a multi-engine rating then finally you can fly a multi-engine plane all this while right the, you only can fly with this tiny plane only then after that right you can fly a jet if you take a jet type rating now this is the thing uh, to learn how to fly a jet uh, it takes 50 to 100 thousand dollars and finally you can be a first officer but to be a captain right you need something called an airline transport pilot license at least 1,500 hours that means you do everything 1,500 then you take this ATPL then you can be a captain does not mean that you are a captain that is a airline there are jobs uh, right but you're at least qualified to be one so I only at the first stage <laughs> okay so what I did I googled right there's actually a school called flight school in Singapore so what they do is that you take some simulator and night classes here for about three months then you go over to their partner school it called San Diego Flight Training International okay so to do the practical test so in Singapore there's no practical at all only the simulator okay so I signed up for this program uh. right now it's a long time ago already I started in 6th of April then I used that simulator it's my first solo la. okay uh, not much to say la. so I went over to San Diego in 14 November okay so this is the airport Montgomery Gibbs where I will spend a very long time there Okay, so for the first uh, one and a half weeks, right, there's something called a TSA clearance. TSA stands for, I think, Transport Security Administration. It's an agency in the US, right, that will do a background check on you to make sure that you're not a terrorist. So this process, right, took 1.5 weeks. And in this 1.5 weeks, you're not allowed to touch the real plane. You can only do ground school. And ground school is a lot, as in, really a lot of theory. So you just, every day, just hit the books, the instructor go through it, right, make sure I know my stuff. And every day watching aircraft take off and then <laughs> so this is a track uh. Singapore you never ever see a track what well, US uh, they, they anything goes on uh. they this thing uh, land at the normal airport uh. <laughs> and this this uh, airport used by many other places by jets also uh. <laughs> and then just, just land a track there <laughs> okay so there's uh, also something called theory test uh, driving you also got driving theory test right MCQ uh, flying also have so uh, there's one test that to test everything uh. they test all these systems plane and non-plane stuff eh, so much eh. and uh, the minimum pass rate is 70% so I got 90% uh. okay so we pass on first try but there's a lot of uh, preparation work that went behind this because if I fail the test right the school may get it uh, like the FAA how can your students so lousy one right so the, the school sets very high standards okay so this is the program that I was in it's called 141 uh, not everybody do this way I, I just happen to do this way. La. And this way is a, it has involved many stage checks. So uh, first stage is called train for solo. Let me go to there. Okay, before that, right, this, this is the plane I fly. Like I learned to fly. So uh, four-seater, you all know what's Cessna 172, right? In case you all don't know, right, that plane is the most produced plane in the world. It will shock some people. Look at the number one most produced plane, Cessna 172, 44,000 mid, 1956 to count. And making still to the present because when you ask people what's the most common plane in the world they'll tell you Airbus or Boeing plane and this is the this is the most common plane in the world surprising because it's a trainer aircraft uh. okay so uh, you see a very model specs right 122 knots and 13,500 feet service ceiling but good enough for trainer why you need such advanced plane right okay so for first stage right it's called train for solo that means uh, from zero right to able to fly a plane by yourself within the airport control, airport area okay so there's a lot of stuff eh. let's say pre-flight uh, airport operations pre-flight means what 
what your things you need to check for before you take the plane out. Airport operation means how to navigate yourself in the airport. ATC, how to talk over the radio. Stalls means uh, uh, when the aircraft loses lift, what to do. Slow flight means to fly the aircraft very, very slowly. And emergency, uh, in case of engine failure, what you do. So all these you have to know uh, before the instructor will let you go solo. Okay, so these are some very nice scenery that you never ever get in Singapore. Even Malaysia also, we don't have this thing. Right, very nice, right? Yeah, San Diego. So yeah, then uh, I got to go to one airport in Ramona. Uh, Ramona is an airport nearby. You see, the space so big, uh, US. <laughs> okay. Okay, so at the end of every stage, right, there's something called stage check. Uh. Uh, that means this stage check is done by another instructor uh, to evaluate whether you are good enough to go to the next stage. Okay, so uh, I have to pass this stage check before I can do my first solo. Okay, so let me give you uh, the learning points that I made from this first stage check which I failed. Okay, so this is the airport Montgomery where I was based at. And this is called the Alpine Training Area. So uh, it's very common that when you do aircraft training, you don't train near the airport because it's very busy. So you go to somewhere a bit further where it's more empty. Yeah. Okay, so the, the thing is I need to, this is how I will go there. I will climb to 3,500, I'll take off. Maintain 3,500, climb to 5,500, and go there. Then do all the stuff. Lah. The, the tester will tell me, do this, do this, do this. Once it's done right, I will descend to 4,000, 3,500, 2,800, then back to uh, 427, which is the elevation of the airport. Okay. So now this is where the fun thing came about. He said, climb to 5,500 feet when able. At this position, I'm supposed to start climbing when I pass here. Okay, so I did. And when I reached 4750, right, he said my controls. Now in a test, uh, if a tester said my controls means you fail already. Because you broke uh, or going to break a rule. Then when my controls, you're supposed to let go, the, the tester will control the aircraft and do something to make it safer. Okay, right. So the thing is, in the debrief, right, he asked me, do you know why you failed? Then I, I suspect, I say, oh, because I hit the airspace. Now I look at this zone, uh, 48 to 100, this is 4,800 to 10,000, right? It's something called a class Bravo airspace. Basically, it's an airspace that you need special permission to enter. You cannot just go up like that. Mm. Okay, so the reason why we climb to 5,500 only after this point is because you see this zone ends here. And I start climbing here. Then he say, I tell this instruction, why are you going to follow? So I tell you to eat shit, you eat. La. Okay, he didn't say that. La. <laughs> But you get the idea what he's trying to do, right? So the, the learning point is other people tell you to do this, you don't you think first, lah. don't go and just because I'm the tester or instructor, you, I tell you you're going to do. Right? So like that. So this is what I'm trying to drill to me. So of course I learn that the next time next day I did a stage check again, right? Retest, right? He never do this already. <laughs> okay. Okay, so after I pass the first stage check, I can do my first solo. Okay, so the first solo, I wait three days uh, for perfect weather. Okay, I, I will just show you all. Where's my... Sorry. Uh. Mm, first solo video... Here. Okay, so th this is what I will do in uh, my first solo. I will basically just go round and round the airport. Take off and land a few times. Okay, so I got subtitles here. So I just show you all uh, the interesting part of my first solo, not everything. Uh, the whole solo is one hour. Okay. So let's see. Let's see how it is I begin. I first have to ask the ground controller. So ask the ground controller, I state my intentions, I say I'm a student pilot on first solo, then I'll taxi over to the runway. Okay, so let me fast forward there. Uh. Okay, so I'm reaching the runway already here. Okay, so I will do something like a pre-takeoff check. So I'll just run through, make sure that everything is okay. You see, I switch the frequency over. Then I'll talk over, talk to the tower to ask them for takeoff clearance. 
This is a GoPro at the back, mounted at the back. I, I, some people they mount it at the front, but because I want to see the instruments, yeah, so I don't have a choice, I have to be mounted there. Okay, so what I'll do is I just show you one takeoff and two landings. My first landing was screwed up. Yeah. Then I just go. Then apply full power, go. I think a lot of people have not seen a copy view before, right? Ha haven't seen before, right? Okay. Six four zero. Okay. So uh, I will just fast forward to my first landing. Okay. So this landing was bad, so you see why. Okay, so it was a few times that I do a go around already. Actually, I reacted a bit too slow. I should actually full power. My instructor will later say uh, he almost vomit for this <laughs> because he was observing. Okay. 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 I I re delay a bit to nine one three. Need to go around. Four one one echo right. Turn right to it left. Turn for the up. Put our left to four one echo. Okay, so go one round lah. Come back. South of center line. Work work about two and a half miles west of the field. That is me, ah. Uh. That's not final two eleven. Is is me. Okay, so my first successful solo landing. Okay, yeah. So I will make a total of three to four lah, but I will not not going to show all of y'all that. Okay, so this uh, is first solo is wildly viewed to be one of the most memorable for any pilot lah. Uh, first, the first time there's no instructor beside you. Then you basically you do, you do or die is only you one person only uh. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so uh, now I'm in stage two, right? I will do I will do a training for cross country solo. It means I can fly myself to another airport. Right now, it's just fly myself in the airport area only, right? Okay, so now it's a bit more complicated. I think I just sit down, lah. Okay, <laughs> so now I do something called how to make a flight plan, like how to plan to go to another place. Pilotage means to look out of the aircraft. Diversion means that how do I uh, go to another airport in case my primary airport has a problem. Lost was if I get lost, what to do? And this soft and short view take off and landing right means you take off and and land in a very short distance, right? Or in the condition where you need to touch down very softly. So as part of my training, I will go to this airport called Hermit Ryan, fifty five nautical miles away, about hundred kilometers, and it's a glider uh, port. You can see there's a glider here. So you never ever see gliders in Singapore. I don't. I don't think even think Malaysia has gliders also. May not have. Okay. So in US you can see a lot of things. Okay, very nice scenery. Then uh, I got a chance to overfly Miramar, 
remind in case you, you know it's a Top Gun, the way they filmed Top Gun is this place. And uh, these are the F-18 jets. You can see these are Osprey, uh, V-22 Osprey. So many, uh, they just park like that. Then you can just fly over the airport and take picture. Uh, they don't care. <laughs> okay, so at the end of my stage 2, I do a stage check. I feel a stage check, so I tell you why. So, okay, I was at this position here, uh, 7,500 feet. Okay, then the tester said, okay, please bring me to this airport caught on the rocks. Okay, so uh, as part of the diversion procedure, what you do is you need to find uh, how the direction to go there. So let's say right here, you need to take out the map, then take uh, this thing, then after that, you can plot. Oh, so about 230 degrees, for uh, example. Then you start flying towards it. Okay? Now, the thing is, right, I was at 7,500, but look at this thing, uh, this number here 5,800 to 10,000. It means there's a special airspace here, the gain that class bravo. If I just maintain my altitude going at that, uh, I'll be breaking uh, the law already. So I need to descend before I enter this place. Okay? Then the next thing is I need to find the distance. After that, find the ground speed. Estimate the time I take to get there. All this information you must tell the tester. After that, estimate the fuel use to make sure that with your remaining fuel, you can actually make it there. Okay? So now the problem is I, when I descended uh, to uh, 5,500, my aircraft actually drifted to this position because of the wind. Ah, so it's a see the wind always affected. Then the problem is right. I never go and recalculate. I go and continue two hundred and thirty degrees heading. So if it's like that, you sure cannot make make it right, to this position. So the Tesla failed me, oh? I cannot make it right. Yeah. So the because of this, I had to redo my state check for this particular portion, and I had to do remedial lessons for six days because the test is not free. <laughs> then I passed on fifth of January. Okay, wow. so hard right. Then uh, okay, the solution to this is that by right, right, when you are descending, right, you're supposed to make sure you maintain your current position. The way to do it, right, is that to, is to do a turn around the point. It's called a ground reference maneuver. You pick a lamp out of the point on the ground and you orbit around it. Uh, I didn't do that, lah. So end up drift, lah. Okay, so the after I cleared the Stage 2, right, I will do a cross-country solo flight. So this was, a, I will do several, but this is the longest one. So from uh, Montgomery, right, I will fly all the way to Torrance. Torrance is in Los Angeles, eh, from San Diego. Yeah, so the distance from here to here is about Singapore to Malacca. La. Then after that, come back, go to Ramona. Ramona is the airport, again, in equivalent distance, something like Johor. Then fly back here. Three hours, eh. Wow, it's Xiong'an. Okay, so in stage 3, right, uh, finally, I, once I do that, I will, this stage 3 is called prepare for a uh, check ride. So everything that I do in stage 1 and 2 will be tested. Basically, everything will be tested. Okay, steep turns, ground reference maneuver, and I failed my first time, first stage check on 21st of January. So I was very bad at landings. I spent extra 15 hours just to do landings. Short few landings, uh, they are very difficult. And I did some other stuff I feel also. Then again, six days later, then I'll take my next stage check. And once I clear the next stage check, it will be a final check ride, 29 January. So the check ride, also not that easy. Uh, it's three to five or four hours of oral exam. The check ride, the examiner will ask you stuff. Everything that you're supposed to know. The law, every, really everything he can ask you. Then do a, a flight, uh, 1.5 to, to 2 hours where he'll test you in on everything. Uh, and you must do a flight plan, summer and winter flight plan. US got that. Uh. Then, uh, luckily I passed this on the first try. So, I always start take pictures, uh, of course, these two are my instructors. This guy, Davinder, uh, he was with me uh, from, from Singapore, from Flight School at G also. This guy was the, uh, this is a check ride, the examiner. This guy is a stage check instructor. The guy who filmed me everything, uh, <laughs> the, the three times, uh, this guy. Then this guy was the, my instructor at Flight School at G. Uh. Okay. So this my presentation haven't ended yet. Uh. This is just not even halfway. Okay? So uh, I like to tell people this. People ask me, how easy it is, right? Uh, they say I play five simulator at home very easier. 
Oh, okay. Oh, somebody. Like okay. So I tell I tell people that statistic that uh eighty percent of student pilots don't complete their training. Very scary statistic. But if you Google uh, it's somewhere there like that. Because there's so many things that can happen. So, so you need money, you need tiny determination, you need aptitude, you do some of that, you cannot. Okay? So I was almost part of this eighty percent. Because right, on the on twenty sixth of January, right, there's uh this after I failed the stage three, I do not know when my final my re check right uh, sorry, re stage three will have happen. So I'm gonna test my instructor, you no. Know, is there a time limit, you know? Right, for training, can I come back next time or you not? Know? Yeah. So uh, my, my instructor said no aspiration on training, just need to build proficiency. But uh, luckily I got booked for next stage check on twenty seventh January and I passed that lot. I was saying I was so close to being not able to come back with my license, you know. Okay, so that was the more of the emotional aspects. Uh. I, now I'll talk, I'll talk to you about, about the theoretical aspects. Right? So planning and making a flight. What are the things you have to do? Right? So let's say from here to here, we want to go to this airport, how to do, right? So the most direct way is straight line. But uh, that's not always possible because of the airspace. So you can go here, you can go here. So there are many considerations that uh, they may ask you. The, the examiner may ask you lah. Okay, so there are all these things. I'm not gonna go through ah. Yeah. So it's not so simple. Ah. The next one is actually do the flight plan. You see all these are waypoints, you know. I need to calculate all the waypoints out, take an account of wind, right? Check the weather forecast, then update, make sure all the run the runway length, right, can airport can support my aircraft. Right? Uh, in, I need to plan for alternate airport. If my primary airport got issue, let's say someone crashed there, the airport closed. How you need to go to the airport? Right? Then uh, fuel. I need to make sure I got enough fuel, right? I need to cannot plan the airport so far away that I cannot even fly there, right? Take off and landing distances are uh, also need to base on the wind, temperature. All this will affect how much runway the aircraft needs. All this needs to be done ahead of time. Then weight balance. Okay, so this is a weight balance form that I use lah. That was issued by the school there, but everywhere else also the same. Basically, right? Don't need to see the numbers there. The idea is that you need to make sure that the plane is not overloaded, the center of gravity is not too far off the, it's still within the envelope. So before I take any passenger, I need to ask everyone what's your weight. <laughs> yeah, it cannot exceed. So uh, it's very easy to exceed. Uh. These kind of small planes, right? you may think there are four seats there. You think can put four people. Uh. Most of the time cannot, uh, actually. Most of the time it's just three people only. Unless you're willing to say, I take half fuel or something like that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, personal equipment, okay, so this is where I'll pass you all some, uh, show you all some nice souvenirs. Okay, so maybe to start with the top left, right? This one, uh, so this is called a uh, view limiting device. Where are that, right? It's for a partial instrument training. It's not instrument rating, but as a private pilot, right, they want us to able to fly the aircraft when there's poor visibility for a short while only to get you out of the emergency. They can show you, I just pass around. Okay, the next one here, I have this gas jar. So this gas, gas jar here, right, is to put under the aircraft wings, the fuel sum, right? And then you can, uh, supposed to inspect the fuel for any contaminants or water inside. I just start. Okay, then this one over here, yeah, this is the plotter lah. That you have to carry on the plane, you know, when you do it diversion, right? Take a map and do, you know, while flying the plane, eh. So, so diversion is hard lah, I would say. Then I have this uh, light over here. This is for night flight. Okay, so you see there's a red light here. This one here. Yeah, you can see. This, uh, this one uh, I wear on my forehead. So when you're on night flight, right, you, when you're controlling your plane, you can't take a toss light out what, yes. and see the instrument. So no have a choice, you need that one. Okay, then this one over here, this is my aviation calculator that I use for the test. Uh, I think Singapore, you can't use this. Uh, but in the US, they allow this. Yeah, the, the, the white light is very bright. So you can take a look at the features that it has. So it's like, uh, help you to calculate aviation stuff. Uh, you can explore. Very nice calculator. Okay, it's a graphics. This one is the paper version of that. This is a slight rule. It's called E6V. Uh. I, I know a lot of people may find it, well, why so I can't, uh, why, why such an old way of, yeah, but the, in the test, right, it, on the plane, right, I cannot use that one. So when I calculate gallons per hour or distance, right, I need to use this, no? 
I need to turn the thing. It's like a slide rule, eh? Ah. Uh, okay, show you. <laughs> then the, this is my keyboard. Okay, so I this is actually strapped to my my, my lap lah. So you can see all the this now I replace all the Singapore stuff already. This is my check the checklist. See these are the important notes lah. That I can take notes. Right. Okay, just plus. Then uh, this one is not on the okay. I pass my headset lah. Show you my headset. <laughs> Aviation headset. So for fun. So this one is not your normal earphone. Headphone. Very durable, right? Okay. Now this one, right? Not on the slide, lah. I only started using recently. So this one is uh, on my lap. It's with the Four Flight app, lah. It's an aviation app, lah. So I I use this now instead of the paper bag. <laughs> okay. So what you are looking at there, just take a look at pre-flight checks, right? There's so many things you can do. Check the light, check the all these uh this a flat, right? Everything, right? Fuel enough, check propeller, check the wheel, check everything. Right? Then give the briefing. I will show this briefing if I have time. Lah. Then uh okay, why don't I just show you one of the long distance flight I made? Uh in the US, right? So this is Okay. Montgomery. Okay, so what is this flight about? I basically I'm flying over to uh, Lord, uh, Torrance in Los Angeles, then I fly back lah. But we just show you the key portions. How does one make a cross country flight in the US? Okay. So I will request a service called flight following. Basically the ATC will guide me there also in a way they help. Ground, ground, and keep switch information tango. A request flight flowing to Torrent, Kilo Tango, Oscar Alpha. I am a Cessna 172 Tango, student pilot, no bravo. Cruising altitude 5,500, 2,4780. Scott 0 0 ground, 2,4780. Change my cruising altitude is 6,500. Two four seven eight zero. Am I clear to taxi to any runway? Seven eight zero. I want to worry that you're ready to taxi. So, so are you? Two four seven eight zero. Ready to taxi. This is a this is a funny vibe. Four seven eight zero. I'm at Gibbs. I have my tango. Seven eight zero. I'm at Toilet Taxi via Juliet Hotel Bravo. Juliet Hotel Bravo. Toilet. Two four seven eight zero. So I, I fast forward so the part. Uh, you see, it takes a while to taxi over to the runway. Uh. Okay, Montgomery Tower, Cessna 24780, holding short to it left, ready for western departure to Torrance. The pilot. Montgomery Tower, Sears departing the Pell, runway is also westbound, runway 2A left, there for takeoff. 2A left, clear for takeoff, 24780. Okay. Mm. Come on, come here. Okay, I'll fast forward. I'll take off your seat before already. Okay. So this one is special. So is what is the tower doing me is that she's handing me over to another controller already because I'm flying out of the airport airspace. So Sokal departure is in charge of the area. Sokal, Cessna 24780, 1500 feet, just departed Montgomery. Sokal approach, identical. Two four seven eight zero identified. I will to the pilot. No bravo. Two seven eight zero. You read our contact. Three miles west of Montgomery. Remain outside of Bravo. And the altimeter three zero one zero. Altimeter three zero one zero. I would like to climb the altimeter five hundred after I reach Delta. Seven eight zero. Roger. Thanks for that. Maintain VFR at forty five for now. 
Okay. Maintain at 4500. Okay, so now I'll just fast forward to somewhere in the middle, right? Okay, so you can see it's somewhere around here already. It's the, I'm not going to show you the whole video. Okay, so somewhere in the middle, right, the, I will listen to something called the ATIS. Called the, it's called ATIS, Automatic Terminal Information Service. So it's to tell me the airport information of the destination airport before I start going there, right? So as you can imagine, uh, just now that one was a recording on the loop. Hmm. Okay. I'm reaching already. Okay, let's fast forward uh, to when I'm near the landing. Two four seven eight zero four mile final. Yeah, I fast forward this part. Okay, you want to see the landing, right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, last word. So I would say this is one of my better landing, just the approach because it's windy, ah. So it's a reactive thing. I need to wait for aircraft to be affected, then I can correct for you, ah. right? Now people say how come my approach so shaky? I mean, you don't fly in flight simulator. Flight simulator, the difference is the wind is constant. <laughs> <laughs> the real life, right? The wind keep changing on. The US car park so big, and all the cars eh, on the right side. Yeah, this one is very big. Got jets, ma. Jets take off and then from there. It's just not a very small plane. Okay, so this is, I'll say one of my better landings. Because uh. partly there's not much wind. Uh. Okay? So that's all for this video. Let me continue. Okay, so after landing, what you do, right? Push the plane back. Eh? The plane, don't forget, cannot reverse one. Eh? <laughs> Most people think, right? So you need to take this tow bar and push back, eh? which is quite strong. Imagine after a flight, you check already. Eh? You come on the plane, still need to push the plane back. And do a 90 degree parking. Eh? <laughs> okay, record the timer. 
then you need to do all this you know need to put the wheel chop cover all this yeah like, to protect ah plane very expensive ah. so you cannot like car just leave outside like that right need to protect okay so after i came back right i joined Sarita flying club because i wanted to at least maintain my skills ah. okay so uh, this just all the flights that i've made so i say here in memory of n2 one is your echo ah, because it's, this is the plane it's no longer in Sarita flying club it's sold already but so far all my flights were on it i flew even up to last one see this was my last flight there so friends even Rahu <laughs> yeah, eh, 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 eh. Uh, at least here is more clean shape <laughs> yeah. see Rahu is here right. okay okay so uh, these are the extra stuff the, sk- the lessons that I learned uh. so uh, in during training right you are rarely pilot in command uh. your instructor is uh. okay so normally if anything go wrong your instructor will be faulted, la, not you. But after training already, right, you're on your own already. The, anything goes wrong, is your fault. <laughs> okay, so you can see, right, this is based from the law. La. The pilot in command of an aircraft is directly responsible for and is the final authority as to the operation of that aircraft. Yeah, anything wrong, your fault. La. Okay, in an emergency, right, uh, you are given the power to deviate from any rule. You can break any law you want in the interest of safety. Right. So if I say there's an engine failure, right? I can land on the highway one. I can land in the military airbase also can. I can land in Changi Airport also can. But you must justify later. La. You see? You must send a written report, blah, blah, blah. You need to say why you do that. Okay? So it's a very powerful responsibility to have. So this is... Uh, someone once told me, uh, everyone knows how to be a car passenger. Most don't know about being a light plane passenger. Right? They depend on you, the pilot, for everything. Because almost everybody has seen this in the car before. But almost no one has sat in a light aircraft before. Right? So you need to be you need to give something called a safety briefing, uh, which I will show you uh, what I gave to my parents. Eh. I brought my parents up. Okay, okay. okay wait, uh, let me jump to that part. 075. So this is a safety briefing mandatory before every flight. Okay, so first okay, there's a passenger briefing. briefing uh. if you're, if you're right. Okay, so the seats, right, 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 it's okay, right? Okay, okay air, air bed, there'll be one below. There'll be one below there. No fire extinguisher. Okay, the exits, right, there's only one exit for this one. Later, when, uh, after the engine start up, right, before you both up, you'll close. Then you'll latch to one here and one at the top. Two lights. Yes. So one, when the needle goes to here, the latch comes to here. Okay. Okay. They'll not be open first, but after when, let's say, during an emergency, if I have to do an emergency landing, right, uh, uh, just before touchdown, right, I will tell you to unlatch the doors. Oh. Right, so in case there's a crash, right, this thing will not jam, the door will not jam. Okay, uh, traffic, right, so, uh, so uh, later we're going to one area, the northern Singapore. part of Singapore. Okay, so there, okay, so there may be other aircraft, aircraft there. there. So, so if you see other aircraft, right, then you just tell me. Okay, okay. then, uh, no, then uh, no talking during critical phases. So, let's so, say, say during takeoff and landing, then no talk. Or when the controller is talking to me, don't say anything. Okay, so then after that, you got any questions about this one. Okay, right. Okay, very interesting, right? I imagine I repeat this for every fly. But by, by law, I have to do this. Yeah. Okay. Next one. So this one is uh, better price and clarified than wrong. Uh. Okay. So I will show you something that uh, very embarrassing. This was one of my early flights. Even bef- uh, before I took my parents, I took some friends uh, who dared to be my early passengers. Okay. Okay, so let me first tell you what, what's going on here. So I, while I was taxiing the aircraft, right, I'll receive two taxi instructions. Okay, so you see what happened. It's a it's a solita, yeah. November 2 1 is 0 echo. Uh, uh, November 2 1 is 0 echo. Charlie 5, echo Sierra, Hoshot, echo Charlie 6. Uh, uh, November 2 1 is 0 echo. Wait, my boot is not transmitting. Uh.
So I was talking and then I, re I realized that I didn't uh, press. Uh, please, please sometimes take note. Oh, sorry. November 2180 echo. Uh, uh, say, again say again the instructions. Echo Reclear, turn left, Echo Charlie 5, Echo Sierra, and also Echo Charlie 6. This is due to an inbound traffic uh, shortly using Echo Papa. November 2180, I've got a request progressive taxi. Okay, okay, the first left here and Echo Charlie 5, sir. Uh, November 2 1 0 Echo, so down on Alcopapa, I make my first left. Okay, sir, attention your visual with the taxiway, Echo Charlie 5. November 2 1 0 Echo, roger. So, I was given new instruction to taxi while I was moving. And at a rule, the aircraft cannot stop on the taxiway. You can't, like, take a car, okay, drive the car to the other side, park one side, do a street directory. I cannot stop. Alright. So, how, it's like, I was really, like, wow. That's why I asked for progressive taxi. Progressive taxi means that they will tell me turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right. It is uh, embarrassing to ask for in the home airport. You are supposed to know your way. Why are you going to ask this kind of thing? Okay. Uh, uh, right, I just asked. Echo Charlie 5, uh, coming up shortly on your left. Uh, confirm visual. Do I want to one issue? Echo confirm. And uh, make a left here, Echo Charlie 5, and then turn right. Echo Sierra. Do I want to one issue? Echo, make a left here, then turn right. Echo Sierra. Echo Charlie 6. Echo Charlie 6. Okay. So, uh, this is a very interesting person, and I will now forever remember where this taxi was. <laughs> <laughs> it's some Ulu part of the airport. Uh. Oh, I learned. Uh, just clarify because, okay, imagine uh, if I never go and ask, uh, if I do something wrong, uh, they will scolding is one thing, you know. They can do something as uh, they can report me, then they have, it's called pilot deviation. You can get penalty, a uh, severe penalty for that. So better to just ask. Uh. Emperors, never mind, just ask. Okay? So it got time, right? I got time, right? I show you one uh, video here. So this one is with Rahu is inside. There. <laughs> okay, let me show you. So, uh, what, so uh, what I will do first right, is that I will... Okay, let me find that exact. Set 1, 2, 10. So I'll show you... Okay, what, what I'm going to show here is that the full steps. Requesting engine startup. How to start the engine. I think you all will find it interesting, right? Uh, ready, how to call for taxi. Then the, all the, the abort plans and, and asking the tower for takeoff. Right? This is the full one, as a data. It's slightly different from the US. Salita ground, November 2180. Who will find this for me? Good morning. November 2180 Echo requesting engine startup. I'm at uh, Alpha 53 with 3 BOB, uh, 2 decimal 5 hours endurance, uh, heading to the Alpha training area. November 2180 Echo, copy the startup is approved and temperature 29, dew point 2.4, QNH 1012. November 2180 Echo, startup is approved, QNH 1012. We'll advise when ready to taxi. November 2180 Echo, and take in a few endurance. A few endurance, 2.5 hours, November 2180 Echo. Copy, thank you. Copy, thank you. Okay, so let me fast forward to the engine start the process. Right? I didn't show you all in the past videos. Right? It is a lot more complicated than a car. Car, you just turn key, you start, or press one button, you start, right? Wow, the plane one, you see. Oh, crazy, the amount of steps. We do the engine start checks. Okay, okay. Interior. Interior. We already all, we already all this already. Interior flaps up. Passenger brief, Passenger brief given. Flaps up. Flaps up is down. down all the way. Okay, okay. fuel, so, fuel proper, proper tank. tank. Okay, okay, we can start off. Let me see the tank. We can see that, see that the tank Left, left is, is more than right. Okay, so I'll start, okay, so I'll start with the right tank first. And then Rahu asked me a nice question, right? <laughs> yeah. <It's> a, <laughs> but now it makes sense ready, right? In hindsight. Because at the run up you because you must take off with a fuller tank. So we need to test both tanks. Huh? So the best way is to switch to the lower tank be at the run up before take off switch to the fuller tank. So you get a chance to try both. Yeah, I didn't explain that part. Huh? <laughs> okay, 
Circuit Breakers. Circuit Breakers. All in? All in? Okay. I'll go set it. Suppose they blow up. But it's dirty, never mind. So, ELT RF seat track, bad lock, DVR takes off. No water pilot here. Cup heat off. Off. Throttle slide it in. Brake set. I set the party brake. So it's fine. A lot of things. Then I'll shout. Brow clear. Brow clear. Master on. Master on. Beaker on. Beaker on. So that it's under this one. Anti collision lights. Okay. Okay. Picture set full reach. Run as required. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Beaker off. Beaker off. Beaker off. Beaker off. Beaker off. Beaker off. Okay, so aircraft engines are not as reliable as business engines. Sometimes you need to try a few times. I even got tried five times before. Crank, 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 crank. The thing just cannot start on. Yeah, Singapore's hot weather is not helping also for that. Okay, that's all for this part. So you can imagine the amount of steps that uh, aircraft <laughs> for a piston engine. Nowadays, uh, okay, one thing to know why this plane was built in 1978. It was designed in the 1950s and 60s. So it, cars, even at that era, right, were like that one. Yeah, you need to do a lot of things. So of course, the plane technology is roughly around the same. So that's why it's a lot of manual to this. Not automated. November 2180, Echo, ready to taxi. November 2180, Echo, taxi via Echo, Papa, holding point Echo 1, runway 21, QNH 102. November 2180, Echo, taxi via Echo, Papa, hold Echo 1, for runway 21, QNH 1012. Okay, let me jump to the next one. So I taxi over the runway. So, okay, this one is about plan. This is special because Rahul was there. I don't normally give the about plan briefing to a passenger because they won't understand. But uh, since uh, you are a lot of potential pilots here, right? So this is something that you have to think before you start taking off. Like you need to have this in mind already. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so I'll follow the 70 rule. I need to achieve 70% of my rotation speed by 50% of the runway. Okay. Okay, that means right, my rotation speed is 55 knots. I need to hit at least 40 knots by the time I'm halfway. Halfway is the where the control tower is. Okay. Okay. Control tower is the halfway mark right. of this one. So I must hit 40 knots. If not, we will just throttle idle. There will be a board to take off. Right. And I'll diagnose what happens. Okay. okay. Engine failure on the takeoff row, a board straight away. Okay. Idle, throttle idle, we exit the runway. Okay. Okay. This one I say uh, might not be possible. Uh. I, I say wrongly. Uh. If your engine failure already on the takeoff row, you can't even move out of the runway. <laughs> right. Engine failure after, after the take after rotation and still sufficient runway remaining, we will land back on the same runway. Okay. If it's not enough runway remaining, right, then I have to find an emergency landing spot somewhere in front. Most probably an expressway. Okay. If it's above 1000 AGL, uh, we should be able to come back to Sarita and then. Okay. Yeah? yeah. Okay, let me jump. Sonita Tower, November 2180 Echo, holding at Echo 1, uh, ready for departure. Would you like to do a uh, one round in circuit for touch and go before going to the airport training area? November 2180 Echo, standing by. November 2180 Echo, standing by. Okay, so I will wait for some time, lah, so I, I will fast forward. November 2180 Echo, Sonita Tower. November 2180 Echo, go ahead. November 2180 Echo, the advice to keep saturated, expect to keep up for your alpha. November 2180 Echo, Roger, we will depart for Ever Alpha. November 2180 Echo, line up runway 21. Line up runway 21, November 2180 Echo. I guess so, yeah, they'll take off. Wait, let's correction, right? Picture set full reach, turning lights on, set on the dirt. Okay, we'll pump on. 
You see, Soita runway is very, very big. The SYC guy here, yeah, we really yeah. find this very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> okay, SP is alive. Okay, temperature, okay, just see the green. Okay, let me skip this more already. Okay, so I'll come to the conclusion. So uh I hope it was worth it everything. Okay? Uh if you think this line came for me, no, it came for my parents. So <laughs> my parents were the one who said it. Okay? Because uh yeah, obviously I spent a lot of money on this. Uh people ask me like, what did I gain from this? Uh? Like, tell me you spend so much money already. Uh what has it how has it helped you? I'll say in terms of practical life like skills, right? No. But intangible intangible gains, yes lah. So things like I've done what few people have done in their lives. I can fly a plane which very few people in this world have the privilege to. I I gain many technical skills. I learn many skills like multitasking, thinking before I speak, perform under stress. Really very stressful. Ah. Like you can go up and come out and you be like drenched ah. <laughs> in sweat. Right? Uh, I made a lot of sacrifices lah. So things like uh, missed investment opportunities with the same amount of money, I could have done so much more, right? I could have like, invested or get a master's degree. If you ask me, right, I can probably get two or three master's degrees with the amount of money I spend, right? But but thing is, master's degree is a lot more common than a private fire license, uh, right? Then uh, I uh, spent a lot of time studying night classes, means that uh, I don't have any social life, I, I didn't meet a lot of new people, I could even gain a lot of connections. Uh. So these are things that you have to sacrifice. Uh. Okay, so this code is something that uh, I really like uh, it's based uh, from Jess Rio, he's an instructor in Singapore. Following the rules keeps your license. Thinking outside the box keeps you alive. Right. Okay. So this was the timeline. From the time I set my goal here and this card. This will be this the most expensive card that I have. <laughs> right. Then uh, this is the I shall leave you with the letter that the FAA sent. Because whenever you get a new license, they will send you this letter. See? You see, uh, we hope you carry your MN certificate with pride as it represents your accomplishments and privileges in our commitment to the aviation community. Right? Very, it's a very inspiring letter. Uh, even you can see, read the whole thing. Uh. Okay? So, uh, yeah, that is all for my presentation. Uh, yeah. any, any questions? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so question time. Okay, see, I know everybody asks that kind of question. Uh. Okay, I give you my... See, I, so when you ask me the question, uh, I even write a blog post on this topic. Eh. Okay, see, I got this uh, consideration of picking a flight school. I wrote this very recently. I think if you all see my blog post, right, you all probably see this. How much did it cost for your PPL so I can budget? Okay, so please read my moral answer here. <laughs> okay, okay, the issue is that I find no real point to tell the cost like right in open like that. You see, I ask ten different people and you get ten different answers. Right? The key thing is that uh this this last two paragraphs, right? It depends a lot. Your where which country you take, your curriculum, your lessons, and your aptitude. And your aptitude is the biggest factor. It seems strange, right? Because your aptitude will determine the number of hours that you need. Alright. And the number of hours is proportional to your cost. Right. Okay? So if you want to know the cost, of course I won't hide it, I will tell you, but I will not mention the recording lah, because it's a very sensitive topic. So I can I don't mind chatting with you after that to tell you how much I actually spent. Okay? Yeah. What and does uh, November 2180 echo mean? mean. It is the plane like a plane uh, license registration number. Okay, let me uh, do I have the picture of that? So I 
Okay, let's see this one. Huh? N to 1 is equal. You see? Yeah. So you, it's your cosine. Huh? You, the plane you are in will be your cosine. Yeah. What are the uh, aircraft available for you to fly the, this flight? What are the aircraft available? Okay, as of two weeks ago, <laughs> okay, they had they had three planes. Okay, one of them is let me go back. Is that Cessna? Okay, this plane has always been with them. This plane I think is forty years old already. Uh, yeah, don't get shocked by the age. Forty years old is normal. Okay. Their second plane, oh yeah, my, so I show you Seita Flying Club website, la, why I say that. Okay, so this, this is their first plane. Uh, their second plane is... So it really heavy. Ah, the second plane is here. Okay, this is like maintenance. So this is their second Cessna, it's US registered. n 5748 e The Piper Warrior, that is their third plane. But the, that Warrior was sold two weeks ago. So now they only left two planes. This plane is in a workshop, so now they only have one. <laughs> and currently, I cannot fly this plane, remember, because I don't have a Singapore license. Oh, right. Even though I may be technically capable, I cannot fly this plane. It's tied to the license, which country you take from. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, the strange things about US planes, uh, you can fly US planes without a US license, but only in the airspace. So for example, you got a Singapore license, you can fly a US registered plane within Singapore. If you have, let's say the US registered plane is in Malaysia, you have a Malaysian license, you can fly that, but only within Malaysia. Uh, this, this fact is not very well known, uh, but only applies to US aircraft. Okay, a any more questions? Can you extend your US license to a Singapore license? Okay, so this, okay, uh, let me explain the question. Convert one license from one country to the other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, in there are several options for that. Do I have the? Okay. Never mind. Okay. So, uh, to convert to a Singapore license, right? You need to take some tests. You need to take an air law exam, and you need to take a check ride. You don't need obviously need the full training hours lah because you already know how to fly. But you definitely you need some training with the instructor. Then uh, some of the tests may be different. Example, uh, there's something called a uh, practice force landing. I, I don't know how you probably do it. From 2,500 feet, the tester will put the engine to either to simulate engine failure. You must be able to land the aircraft. From overhead the runway, 2,500 feet, circle down, and not just land anywhere. You need to land some 1,000 feet zone, I think. Some designated area. You cannot take two, you need to land at a certain point. Uh. Okay. The US one does not have this. I don't have a practice force landing like that. This is one manual. Another thing is a power on store. Power on store, Singapore one don't have. US got. Uh, there's something called the ground reference maneuver. Do a S turn, uh, turn around the point. Singapore one don't have that. But US have. So some country got test a bit differently. Uh. So this uh, procedures has to be learned if you never do before. Okay. So, uh, but a US uh, something very special. See, US very special one. Right. Let me show you. Okay? So this thing. It is trivial to use a strength of any IKO license to get an FA PPR piggyback. Okay, so if you want to get a US license, there's two ways. One, you take the full way, you take a check ride, FA check ride, then you get a full FA license. Another way is to get FA PPL piggyback. What this means is that you have any license. IKO means pretty much every country outside the US, like Singapore license, right? I can go to the FAA, I tell the FAA, I got this license, can you issue me a piggyback? They will just issue it to you. Uh, the process is a lot more complicated than that, but it's simple enough such that you don't even need to take a uh, check right. It's an administrative issue, probably a few days in the US you spend there. After you get the piggyback, right, the validity and restriction of the, P of the PPL will become contingent on your CAS license. Because remember, a CAS license right, uh, cannot fly cross country one. And uh, another one, a uh, CA's license don't fly at night. My US license, I can allow to fly at night. This will become limited to that. Because the US uh, license will follow the law. Ma. They follow your check right, ma, your standard of your country. So this is the limitation. No? Uh, the thing is, if your original license expires, right, your US license will also expire together. US, only US got this thing, piggyback. No other country, almost everyone, they'll tell you to take a check right. 
Okay. Any more question? Sorry, one more notice on website. It's a part 61. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, do the whole work. Okay, what, what's the question about it? I thought I was quite detailed. Yeah. There? Two main types of fly school? Uh? Yeah, what's the difference other than the people? Uh, uh, like, okay, I don't know. Like, yes, okay, one of them, uh, I didn't write here, mm. but 141 is targeted more towards airlines. Okay. So they are more strict. And another thing, again, not here is that. Uh, you want to get certain subsidies. I think certain, like for example, veterans in the US, right? Yeah. They can get subsidies for training. That's include pilot training. They can only get subsidies for part one for one school, oh, yeah. because it's FAA regulated. It's oh, not some top dig at Harry School. Oh yeah. Part part sixty one is you can fly the same plane, but it's just same training. So much okay. Train. Okay, you all take the same check, right? Oh, yeah. Same standard. Oh, yeah. Same theory test. Oh. So. Uh, but the way to get around to that point is different. Part 141 is very strict syllabus. Part 61 is like a private driving instructor. Oh, private. He just teach you as you think, then deem you okay, you take the test. I see, I see. Okay, yeah, I have to try. Why don't we have any gliders in this region? Malaysia, you need a large space and you need thermals. Like the rising air mass. Uh. Uh. Is, I think it's better in near mountainous area. I think so, I'm not sure. We don't have much here. Your airspace also, because you see, gliders, they are not as well, uh, controllable, you don't have an engine. So you need a very large space. If you don't have a large space, it's very hard. It's very easy to, okay, let's say the ATC tell you, I want to climb this altitude. Uh. Glider, I cannot just climb like that. What? I mean, I glider confirm can descend very fast, but how you climb? <laughs> cannot, you are very limited in your control. Mm. Also, uh, why are we still using Cessna when they're so old? Okay, why Cessna, why this lane, right? Okay, Cessna 172 is true, the design is old, but there are many revisions. What? Mm. Okay, let's see. Uh. You can see, started 172, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, I think S. Where's the latest one? S. A, okay, Titan A, uh, still, still quite old. Uh. What's the. Uh, yeah, S. Okay, why they like to use this? Uh, it's because it is, they call it very forgiving to mistakes. It is slow. It is deliberately slow. Uh, because let's say the ne okay, the other very common plane is a Piper Warrior. The next common one is a Cirrus SR20. Those are okay. A Cirrus is very fast plane. It's not so conducive because you make a mistake, right? It means that you don't have enough time to correct for mistakes. They purposely want a plane that is slow, and when you stall, right, it's very obvious that it's stall. Let's say like when you lose leaf, pom, it drops. Right, the drop is very obvious. Uh, and another thing is because uh, the plane is so widely available, instructors are very uh, familiar with that plane. Uh. If you bring it to another new plane, the instructor need to train the new plane first before they can teach. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Uh. One last question. Which, which parts were uh, scary and which parts were really enjoyable for you? Uh, scary? Definitely first solo is the scariest. Uh. Like uh, enjoyable. Okay, maybe I'll say in terms of the maneuver, which one I like the most is power on store. Okay, power on store. I think CAS don't have this. Singapore one don't have. So what the maneuver is that is to simulate a store in the takeoff configuration. Okay, so what happens is that well, okay, let's say for traveling, right? You take off rotation speed of fifty five knots. You slow the aircraft to fifty five knots. The aircraft pitch up quite high. Okay, then you put full power. The aircraft pitch up so high. Basically. You cannot even see the ground anymore. You don't even see the horizon, you just see the sky. Then you're supposed to pitch so high until the aircraft stall, the aircraft just block. And you need to hold right rudder at the same time also. Because the aircraft will tend to turn to the left. There's a left turning tendency for a plane. Right? So that one I say is my most it's the most thrilling maneuver. Uh. In terms of uh, cognitively the most difficult is diversion. Okay, so let's go back to the diversion slides. Yeah, that, that one I failed in stage two. It's really, really hard. Okay, so imagine, right? Okay, let me show everything, ding, ding, ding. Okay, so if I hear the cup here, right? So, so I need to actually put the plane in a holding pattern. And there's no autopilot in the plane. So I circle, 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 right? And while circling, uh, I need to take my map and do, you know, calculation. And do all this already. Okay, once I find the direction, I start heading towards it. And while heading towards it, while flying the plane, I need to do all this. 
So that makes this uh, most challenging, I would say. Okay? In terms of cognitive, in terms of uh, technique, short field landing is the hardest for me. At least I take 15 hours. You need to touch down in 200 feet. I keep on cannot make it. It's hard, uh. especially when the crosswind comes in somewhere. Uh. Wow, then <laughs> challenging already. Yeah? Okay. okay, no more questions. Right? Any more? Oh, Can you get a spin rating in Singapore or Malaysia? Sorry? Say? Can you get a spin rating in Singapore or Malaysia? Spin rating? Is there such a thing? Spin rating? I think there is, but I'm not sure whether you can get it. Oh, spin rating? Okay, I don't think there's such a thing. As for FA1, right? Okay. Is, I think commercial you have to do. I think private pilot, only if the plane can do it. Yeah. Cessna 172 is not rated for a spin. Unless it's something called utility category. Another thing, la, you need to remove a lot of things from the plane. Then you can do it. So they don't. Commercial maybe have. How long was it on check ride? Uh, I think two hours. Did I mention this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, here, right. Like, three to four hours for the oral exam. 1.5 to two hours for the flight. Okay, so in this flight, right, you're supposed to simulate flying to another airport. But the tester obviously don't have time. La. I mean, okay, this airport is in Las Vegas, ah, KVGT. You take about three hours or four hours to go there. Obviously, I'm not going to fly that long. Right? So you fly the first few sections of your flight plan. Then the tester will say, okay, please divert me to this place. Test all your skills. Uh, then after that, once you finish everything already, you land back at your original airport. La. Yeah, this, it's challenging. Uh. <laughs> Three to four hours of all exam. Uh. Uh, the hardest, I think, was when you go out to flight instructor, is one whole day. Or two days. Uh. Just on the theory or the exam. How do you ask you? you just ask you every single thing that a pilot is supposed to know. Because private pilot is the first eh. Instrument rating is above eh. Then once you go to commercial, then you if you want to do instructor, it's instructor is on top. And instructor is supposed to know everything from private instrument commercial. There's no written exam. It's MCQ. Done in computer. Mm. Same as your driving test also, it's on a computer one. Audio feed. Okay, I have something called a cockpit audio cable. Okay, I'm well, not just fine for you all. Uh. TV audio. Is that a GoPro? I use this one. Okay, so this one here, right, will connect to the passenger headset connector. Then the other side goes to my GoPro. La. Okay, this is a 3.5mm. So GoPro, they have a USB-C connector. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Any more question? Okay. Uh, why, why I have a light? Light spot is actually less privileged than a private pilot. Uh, so, in, I mean, just in terms of the money. Uh. Okay, yeah. Uh? Uh, okay, if you go I think you Google they probably find a lot of school of thought. Like a lot of instructors say don't bother, just get a private pilot. Okay? First thing, a light sport as a uh, license is not recognized in Singapore. You can't you cannot even bring a light sport aircraft into Singapore. It's not allowed. The CAS don't allow this at all. Okay? So if I take also no use, uh, I only can take it. Yeah, I know US and Australia they have like something like light sport. Okay? Next is the privileges that come with it. I think light spot, you can only fly aircraft with one passenger. In the day, in a lot of, a lot of restrictions are basically la. Okay, if you want to unlock the restriction, you need to take a instruction or test. So you see, by the time you take all these things, right, you might as well take a private pilot. Uh, a private pilot is a lot more useful, unless you're just happy to fly around your airport. I think light spot aircraft, you cannot fly to another airport also. I'm not sure about that. Hmm. Yeah, about the uh, then I, I can't fly the, if I take that come back to Singapore, I cannot do anything with it, then... <laughs> any, any, any final questions? Any final? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's close. Yeah, uh, so that concludes our talk for today. Uh, we're having 